All this discussion of simple harmonic motion tends to get people thinking about waves. Every time we graph that position in time, we see some sort of wave being formed. If we look at an idealized wave pattern, we can see some properties that we have been discussing. You can see that this wave is very similar to the position time graphs that we have studied. The main difference is that the horizontal axis is not measuring time, but a distance. Because that is what a wave is. It is the movement of energy through a medium. As the energy moves through in a horizontal direction, the medium gets placed vertically. This vertical displacement is still referred to as amplitude. In simple harmonic motion, since we were looking at a function of time, we labeled one complete oscillation as the period. However, in this case, we are looking at a distance. We call this the wavelength and label it with the Greek letter lambda. This is simply the distance between two corresponding points on a wave. These points could be two crests, which is the highest amplitude on a wave, two troughs, which is the lowest amplitudes on a wave, or two anythings that are the same on subsequent waves. Now this is a wave, so it does have a period and a frequency, and we can relate these if we consider the wave's velocity. Velocity is displacement over time. In this case, we measure displacement as wavelength. Now the time it takes to complete one oscillation is the period of the wave. So the velocity of a wave is given as the wavelength over the period. And we also know that the period is the inverse of the frequency, so we could also write the velocity as the frequency times the wavelength. So calculate the wave velocity if the distance between wave crests is 10 meters and the time for one oscillation is 5 seconds. We are asked to find velocity, which we know is either wavelength over period or wavelength times the frequency. Since we are given the time for one oscillation is 5 seconds, this is the period. So wavelength over period it is. And we end up with a wave velocity of 2.00 meters per second. This type of wave we have just defined is called a transverse wave or shear wave. The disturbance is perpendicular to the direction of travel and is normally what most people think of a wave. Another type of wave is a longitudinal wave. In this case, the energy travels in a direction parallel to its travel. In this case, the medium kind of gets bunched up and then spreads out. Then it bunches up and it spreads out in a wave pulse. The bunching up area is called a compression while the spreading out is referred to as a rarefaction. Sound waves are an example of this type of wave. Something that is kind of cool to show with longitudinal waves is the change in density of the medium as it is traveling through. At the points of compression, the density of the medium increases from the average density, and at the points of rarefaction, the density decreases from the average density. There are a lot of situations in which more than one wave arrive at a place at a given time. What happens is that the energy that creates the wave adds together so that the disturbance is the sum of all of the waves. This coming together of the waves is referred to as superposition, and the result is a change in the amplitude of a created wave called interference. Constructive interference happens when the crests of two waves align. Take wave one and wave two. These are two identical waves that happen to arrive so that the crests and the troughs line up. The resultant wave at the bottom has a crest with an amplitude equal to the sum of the crest amplitude of wave 1 and the crest amplitude of wave 2. Notice also that the troughs line up and the resultant wave has a trough with an amplitude equal to the sum of the trough amplitude of wave 1 and the trough amplitude of wave 2. So constructive interference results in a larger amplitude and this shows up in both the crests and the troughs of the resultant wave. Destructive interference occurs when the crest of wave 1 meets the trough of wave 2. When you add the amplitudes of those points, the resultant wave flattens out. In reality, you don't usually have two identical waves meeting, and even if you do, they rarely have the crests line up exactly with the troughs. So a resultant wave will have a lot of times so a resultant wave will a lot of times have a much more complicated structure.